Don't you hate interruptions? There are few things more frustrating than when you're in the middle of something important or trying to hit a deadline and something pulls you in a different direction. It could be a ringing phone or even your own mind straying from the task at hand. Regardless of their origin, interruptions have a knack for destroying our focus and leaving us to regain our train of thought. Necessary Interruptions In chapter 19 of her book, Reset, Deborah Faleta begins with a powerful story about a family whose lives were saved by a carbon monoxide alarm. The strange thing about this is that they had reluctantly installed the alarm just be before leaving for vacation. Shortly after returning home from their vacation, they awoke to a loud beeping noise from the carbon monoxide alarm. They were a little suspicious since the alarm company had just installed it prior to their vacation. The alarm company insisted that they call the local fire department. Within a few moments of being within the home, the fire department ordered the family to evacuate. The firefighter pulled the couple aside to let them know that the levels of carbon monoxide were so high that if they had not heeded the warning, they would have been dead by morning. This particular interruption turned out to be a necessary one as it alerted them to deadly gas levels that could have killed them if ignored. Our built-in alarm system. This story illustrates that our emotions can act as a life-saving alarm system. Deborah explains that we have a built-in alarm system called the sympathetic nervous system. This system is best known for its stress response, more commonly known as the fight or flight response. Whether crossing a busy street or in the middle of an argument, our emotions are an integral part of this system sending signals that something needs our attention. Every single emotion clues us in that something is happening underneath the surface. This is why therapists often ask, how does that make you feel? Because feelings are a part of a bigger equation about our internal experiences. We often react to the feeling itself instead of recognizing it as a signal and responding accordingly. Let's talk about reacting to feelings versus responding to emotions. Uh, first, we'll begin by talking about some examples of reacting to feelings in unhealthy ways. And these are from Deborah Flata's book, so I want to make sure and give her credit for these. Uh, first one is, Mike was feeling overwhelmed, so he snapped at his wife and kids even though they hadn't done anything wrong. Kelsey was feeling insecure, so she lied about her job to make herself sound smarter. Ben was feeling stressed, so he blew some money shopping online, even when it broke his budget. Susan was feeling desperate, so she gave him another chance, even though he had broken her heart before. Trey was feeling guilty, so he said yes to the meeting, even though it took away more time from his family. Let's talk about what reacting means. Reacting means acting quickly to make the feeling go away. Maybe you can relate to this. You feel something completely uncomfortable. And so the thing that you want most is to make that uncomfortable feeling go away. That's kind of my informal summary here. Uh, we, it's important that we understand that much of what we do is driven by how we feel. If you feel something, you might typically act in a certain way. And there's a problem here, and, and that's that we often don't take time to fully process or understand why we're feeling the way we do. We don't take time to ask, what might this feeling be telling me? We don't ask what it is signaling to my brain. If it is a bad feeling, we do whatever we can do to make it go away. All right, let's talk about responding and what responding means. Responding means processing the feelings and what it signals. We must begin to see our feelings as signals. Making this shift in our thinking will help us to take positive steps with our feelings. 
If we take a minute to break this down, we'll quickly realize that a signal is there to tell us something. Responding allows us to act in a healthy way to address the root issue. When we begin to understand feelings as signals, this gives us options. Let's review what we've learned. We have the power to either reactively act on our feelings or consciously respond to them. Don't simply tune out your emotions. We need to lean in and ask questions to see what they might be telling you. Doing so might just save your life. Verse for reflection. There's a time for everything, a time to weep and a time to laugh. Ecclesiastes 3, 1 and 4. 